Hello, good evening. Hello, good night, and how are you? Good night, everyone. Good night. A pleasant Wednesday night to you, Elder Jones. How are you doing? I am fine, Elder Wilson. God bless you. And God bless everyone who is taking the time out to join us this evening. I welcome you all. I welcome people from wherever you're joining. I know some people are joining from the Cayman Islands, some from Barbados, some from Naples, some from Miramar, all over the place, all over the United States, all over the world. And I just welcome you all. So I want to ask a question. What is the power of prayer? How can prayer bring a person back to life? How can it heal the sick? How does, it, how does prayer comfort those who are anxious or sinking into depths of depression? Why do Christians pray for their future spouses or pray prayers of protection over their children as they send them off to school? How can prayer impact those who don't know Jesus or help in a time of crisis like a pandemic? There are dozens of real life accounts in the Bible where Jesus and other disciples battled in prayer. God shut the heavens and prevented rain from falling for three years at Elijah's request. He parted the Red Sea for Moses to lead his people through. He cast out demons. Jesus healed the sick and gave sight to the blind and on more than one occasion raised people from the dead like Lazarus. Do we realize the power we have available to us when it, we take this authority of prayer in, in our hands? If we did, we would be praying in Jesus' name more often. There would be no such thing as doubt, fear, or anxiety because we would be on our faces before God, storming the heaven and the realms in battle with the darkness against those evil forces in our world. As we continue this 40 days per journal journey and fasting, we will have experiences that we've never had before we will realize that God is with us and that we can take him at his word. Again, I say welcome to those of you just joining. I invite that you put your hallelujahs, your amens in the chat because we're gonna have a wonderful time this evening. I now invite Brother Balfour Johnson to do our opening prayer. Thank you, Sister Jones. Um, let us pray. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, we're hearing you loud and clear. Yes. Okay, let us pray. Mm -hmm. Father in heaven, we want to give you thanks and praise for giving us another opportunity and privilege to meet on a Wednesday night. And Father, as we come, we ask that you will Forgive us for our sins, sins of omission, sins of commission, the things that we left undone that we should have done. So even though the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts will be acceptable to you. 
Lord, we want to thank you for those who will be leading out this evening. Lord, we ask that you will grant them your blessing. So whether they minister to us, whether in songs or in testimony or word, Lord, we will receive the blessing that you desire that we should have. Lord, we ask that you will have a special blessing for those who will be visiting with us, even maybe not of our faith. Father, help them to realize that it wasn't the invitation from the friend or family or, or the platform on which they saw, but it's your Holy Spirit that has led them here. And Lord, that they receive a blessing. Help them, Lord, to, to leave knowing you much better and willing to follow you. And even as our host, Sister Jones, just mentioned our 40 days of prayer. Father, we just ask that your spirit will be felt among each and every one of us. Father, we need that revival we need a reformation. We need a closer walk with you. Lord, we need to rebuild the waste places. So, Lord, we ask that we'll be inspired as we go through this. And for those who are interceding, Lord, for family members and, and relatives and neighbors, Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit will reach out to them even now. Touch their hearts, Lord. So when they will have given this invitation or such invitation, they with willing hearts will want to come and to hear your word, to learn more and to follow you all the way into eternity. Father, we just ask again that you will be with the one who was appointed to speak this evening, Pastor Eric Clark. Father, we ask that you will put your words in his mouth. May we, like, like Pentecost, Lord, each of us hear what you have to say to us, so as our faces are different, our needs are. So, Lord, may we hear a word from you this evening. A word will turn our hearts to you. A word that will challenge us. Lord, we recognize your soon coming. And Lord, the work that you have placed before us will be motivated, will be strengthened, will be used every opportunity to be your hands and your feet. And Father, we pray that when time and earth is ended and you choose to put in your appearance, Lord, we pray for all of us here listening, whether by the resurrection or whether by transformation, we'll be able to hail you as your personal savior from sin along with those who we have labored with and labored for, and we all go home to spend eternity with you. We thank you and we praise you. And we ask all of this again with the forgiveness of our sins to Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. Thank you very much, Brother Johnson. Thank you. Now we'll have our song service from Brother Josiah Ruff.
to Jesus, there I find comfort, and there I am blessed. Thank you, Brother Josiah and Sister Sarah Ruff. Thank you for that. We now have our scripture reading from way in modern town, Cayman Islands, from Sister Annette Vaughan. Good evening, Maranatha and other visitors. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. We're hearing you loud and clear. I figure. Welcome. I'm, I'm happy to be worshiping with the Maranatha folk and everyone else at the invitation of my childhood friend, Dr. Brenda Jack. Beautiful. Um, the scripture is taken from 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 8 to verse 18. So 2 Kings chapter 8, verse 8 to verse 18. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. Now the king of Syria was making war against Israel. And he consulted with his servant saying, my camp will be in such and such a place. And the man of God sent to the king of Israel saying, beware that you do not pass this place for the Syrians is coming, are coming down there. Then the king of Israel sent someone to the place of which the man of God had told him. Then he warned him and he was watchful there, not just once or twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was greatly troubled by this thing. And he called his servants and said to them, will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of the servants said, none, my lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedroom. So he said, go and see where he is that I may send and get him. And it was told him saying, Surely he is in Dothan. Therefore, he sent horses and chariots and a great army there. And they came by night and surrounded the city. And when the servant of God arose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said, Alas, my master, what shall we do? And he answered, do not fear for those who are, do not fear for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. 
And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. So the Syrians came down to him. Elijah prayed to God and said, strike this people I pray with blindness. And he struck them with blindness according to the words of Elisha. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. Amen. Thank you, Sister Vaughn. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Now we'll have, you'll do it again from Alvita Philip Scarbor from Barbados. Alvita. That you are faced with circumstances you can't get through. Right now it seems that there's no way out and you're going under, going under. But God's proven time and the time again that will take care of
certainly do it again he'll do it again just take a look where you are now and from where he's brought you and sister Kalea Collimore from Barrier Seventh-day Adventist Church in Barbados will just remind us of how powerful prayer is sister Collimore good night do you have a problem that is very hard to bear? Do you not? Do you wrestle with it? Take it to the Lord in prayer. He will guide you and results will always be correct. So talk it over with the Lord. He will not let. Do you have a burden that your friends do not know about? Is it something you would rather they would not find out? Go to Jesus at this moment. Kneel to him in prayer. You will find he is ever present, waiting for you there. Bear your heart of evil doings. He will hear you through. He is willing to forgive you and, for, and forget it too. And when you find your burdens are much great to bear, they will grow much lighter when you go to him in prayer. Prayer will change your heart into a cheerful song. If in faith you act, the answer will soon long to come. Always take your burdens to the foot of Calvary's cross. Christ is there to save you, and you will not suffer loss. My brothers and sisters, in Christ, as we do go through these 40 days in prayer, remember, prayer is power. Pray it through. Pray it on. Thank you, Kalea. Amen. Thank you Amen. very much. Amen. Wonderful. Amen. 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 I should be saying more amens on the chat coming up. On yes. I'm not seeing much at all. Come on, you're disappointing me. Please don't. So what exactly is the power of prayer? The power of prayer isn't the words you utter. It's not about what you pray or even how you pray. Prayer can be defined as talking to God, but it is much more than that. Prayer is an act of worship that glorifies God and reinforces our need for him. Through living a life of prayer, we communicate with the very source of and purpose of our existence. So brother and sister Ruff will lead us in song, sweet hour of prayer. Then we'll have Two prayers, one by Sister Barbara Campbell from the Maranatha Seventh-day Adventist Church and followed by Elder Otmar Wilson from the Maranatha Seventh-day Adventist Church. Brother and Sister Ruff. <laughs>
Mr. Campbell. Yes. Good evening. Let us pause a moment and get our hearts in tune for prayer. Father, please make me worthy to speak on behalf of your people this evening. Our Father and our God, our provider, our compassionate friend, and our Redeemer. We want to thank you, we want to praise you, and we want to adore you. Thank you, Lord, for walking beside us today. We are grateful <clears throat> that when things appear challenging or rough, for we were tempted, you assured us of your promises in your words that you would be with us. Lord in heaven, you are our protector, our defender, our promises in you. Sorry, we are, and we should praise you every day. Many of us, especially seniors in our congregation, in homes for seniors, and even those who live alone, are lonely souls that needs to know that they are not forgotten. We are your hands and feet on this earth, Lord. Help us to apply ourselves lovingly and joyfully to those who are alone. Let them feel your arms around them and to listen to your voice when you speak. Have them to read your words so that they can get the message, the message you have for them, Lord, and Help them to be, to reach out to others, especially in their lonely times. We, for whatever reason, Lord, there are many who are hungry. This COVID pan pandemic have caused many disruptions and, and hunger is one of them. Teach us to share, show us the ways we can be of service to those in our communities and our churches. Show us the needs of the brokenhearted, faint-hearted, and let us volunteer some food, a glass of water, and your comfort. Let us, Lord, live the truly Christian life by reaching out in love. And Father, there's a special group of individuals that I know, Lord, that you care deeply about. There are many mothers who are single parents and are struggling spiritually, emotionally, and financially. Some have struggles and need, and they need our, your help to overcome what is standing in their way of happiness. Help them to see your solutions for them as the calm within the storm they are passing through. Help them to pause and remember you are their strength and in you their rest. Help the rest of us, Lord, 
to reach out to them, to help them when the help is needed, when it's asked. Help us not to be judgmental, but help us to be encouraging towards them. And there are some of our, of your children who are forgotten. Sometimes when your people come before you, there are lost souls who needs to be rescued. We do not know why, and we are not going to judge, but Lord, remember those in prison. You have not given up on them and neither should we. So Father, this evening, there are souls who needs to be saved. Have mercy upon them. And may we, however possible, Lord, reach out to them. We pray this evening, dear Father, that somehow they also will reach out to you. Father, we thank you for your listening ear and attention this evening. We thank you for the answers that will be received and the many blessings from your hands. We pray all of this with the forgiveness of our sins in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 As we continue in prayer, Lord, we ask that you will at this moment remove everything that is unlike you from us and fill us with your spirit so that we can be vessels fit for your service. Lord, we come to you this evening, petitioning your throne on behalf of the people of Ukraine. This war has been waging, raging since February and even beyond from 2014. You have been there with them. The enemy who started the war thought it would have been over in three days. But God, like you did for the people back then, you have demonstrated that those who are with us are more than with them. And we plead for and on behalf of the people of Ukraine, they have been bombarded, yet their spirits are high. They are strong and they are putting up resistance. Lord, we ask now that even at this moment, you will visit among them and you will allow the peace of God to hover over them and to give them strength and courage. There are many people, dear God, who have been displaced. Many lives have been needlessly lost for what we do not know. But Lord, you told us in your words that when we see these things happening, we should recognize that the end is near. So God, we ask that you will prepare us as your people, not only to be ready, but to get others ready. We pray for the children, dear God, who have been displaced and devastated and have to be living in the dark because they are in underground bunkers, not knowing when the bombings and the war and the killings will stop. They are innocent of this war. They have not provoked it, God, but it is brought upon them by the enemy. So Lord, we ask that you will provide them a shelter just like you did in the past. You are a shelter in the time of storm. You, your hands are hovering over them. Lord, we know that you are, there are people who are called by your name living in Ukraine. 
We ask, dear Father, that even now you will strengthen their faith in you and help them that even with what is happening around them, they will stand firm and they will pray. And I'm sure, dear God, you will hear their prayers and give them the victory that they need. Lord, we pray for the soldiers and their families. Both sides, the families of both soldiers have been needlessly suffering because their loved ones have been put in this adverse situation. Many lives have been lost, yet the leaders are de de denying that any such things are happening. And the people are unaware of what is happening to their sons and daughters. So God, we place everything in your hand. And we ask, dear God, that even now you will intervene, just like you did with Nebuchadnezzar. You soften his heart. You can also soften the heart of Vladimir Putin so that he will withdraw his soldiers from the Ukraine and will make a turnaround. Lord, continue to watch over them. Allow your peace to be with the Ukrainians. And even in the midst of disaster, Lord, we know that you will be there for them. So we claim your promises. You said in your words, you will never leave your people or forsake them. So now, for those who have not yet called on you, Lord, even at this moment, I ask that you will touch their hearts so that they will turn to you and that this will help to beat back the forces of evil. Continue to be with us here at Maranatha as a church. And as we embark and we continue on this journey of 40 days of prayer, may our prayers ascend to you. May our hearts be bowed low on our knees. And may we cry out to you, not only for ourselves, but for the sufferings of the world all around that peace will be, uh, be seen and, and be felt. Thank you, dear God, for hearing. Thank you for answering with the forgiveness of our sins. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. 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 We turn this part over to Pastor Dr. Wilkie. Good evening, everyone. Oh, let me make sure that my audio is right. I think it is. Can you all hear me? Yes, you can. Yes, we're hearing you, Pastor. We're Good hearing evening. you. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. I am delighted to introduce to you my friend and colleague, Pastor Eric D. Clark, who hails from the beautiful islands of the Bahamas. You know what they say? It's it's better in the Bahamas. Only problem is that spelled B-I-T-T-E-R. <laughs> uh, I had the privilege of meeting uh, Pastor Clark about 15 years ago. At the time, he served as the president of the Cayman Islands Conference. And um, we just had a wonderful time. Uh, I was down there for a, an evangelistic series. Had a wonderful time. Just uh, one of the most... A genuine Christian gentleman that you'd ever meet. Pastor Clark is a graduate of Northern Caribbean University in Jamaica and also of Andrews University in Michigan. He currently serves as the president of the North Bahamas Conference. Uh, also, while serving as the president, he pastors the Freeport, Eight Mile Rock, and West End Churches and serves as the chairman of the Board of Governors for the Grand Bahama Academy. Uh, Pastor Eric is married to Patrice Nies Cabella, 
a registered midwife and nursing sister with the Ministry of Health. They have three adult children. Pastor Clark's favorite scripture is also my favorite scripture. Proverbs 3 verses 5 and 6. It says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. It is an absolute privilege tonight, beloved friends, for us to have uh, Pastor Eric Clark as our special guest speaker for this evening. Pastor Clark, we welcome you. I'm so delighted to have you joining us tonight. After the meditation song by our dear brother, Junior Hines, who, here, who is coming to us tonight from the Baden Town SDA Church, uh, after he presents the meditation song to us. The next voice you'll hear is that of Pastor Eric D. Clark. Please say a prayer in your heart and receive a word as he ministers to us.
Amen. Amen. I'd like to say thank you so much and good evening to everyone. Uh, thank you to our pastor, Dr. Wilkie. It's just a privilege and a joy to, to be able to worship and fellowship with you tonight. I want to express a special thank you uh, to uh, Brother Junior Hines for that song, Goodness of God, one of my favorites. I want to thank Sister Brenda uh, for communicating with me up until this time. Uh, she is certainly a blessing to the body of Christ, and uh, we are in the process of arranging her relocation. I just wanted to say to Maranatha, if you ever want to throw her away, NBC, the North Bahamas Conference, will provide an immediate catch for her. Um, <laughs> I want to express thanks to Sister Annette Vaughan for our scripture, for the Bentley greetings, and to all of the persons who are on the platform or Board of Elders, um, our coordinator and moderator this evening. Thank you so much, ma'am. God bless you. And to all of you, I thank God. Pastor Wilkie, it's always a delight and it's a pleasure. And I was so happy when they told me that you were at Maranatha. Um, I remember visiting many years ago. Um, there was a time when we had uh, brother and sister Hyatt there. Um, sister Hyatt used to teach in the school there and she used to teach for the church here in the North Bahamas Conference. Um, I remember that her first name was Olive, and just now I just went blank on her husband's name. But the Hyatts, uh, they were special to us back in the day, and we thank God for them. Uh, for the allotted time this evening, I want to run as quickly as we can with you, and I want to request permission just to be able to uh, cut and paste. I recognize that this is 40 days of prayer, renew, restore, revive. I've added the word reset to it also. And um, I know that we can't cover everything tonight. I know that over the period you would have covered, and I've just been blessed thus far. So as we go through, let's be reminded of the scripture reading. I know that all of us know it, and so I'm going to not read it at this time, but let's seek God's um, uh, covering. Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We are so blessed to be in your presence, as it were, on this Wednesday evening, just to seek your face and ask for guidance and wisdom. As we talk about prayer and the Holy Spirit and its connection, we pray, O oh God, that you will uh, direct in all of our thoughts, and may we be blessed to be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you all, and it's really a joy. As we go through the message tonight, I was just thinking that there are some things that we can't do until we pray. Can you agree with that? There are some things that we can't do until we pray. And then, when we pray, there are some things that we wouldn't do. It was John Bunyan who said it, this way he says you, you can do more than pray after you have prayed but you cannot do more than pray until you have prayed can you receive that so when you look at this passage of scripture as a basis then in uh, second kings chapter 6 beginning from 8 and verse the verse 13 you'll discover that there was this king of syria he was launching an attack against israel israel represented the people of god syria is plotting an ambush against israel and every time the king of syria plans these high level secret attacks against god's people elisha is delivering intelligence for the king of israel He's telling him not to go this way and to go that way uh, where the Syrian king was plotting for. And this had happened several times. You remember the story, don't you? And each time the plans of the Syrian king, they were exposed. They were thwarted. And eventually he called a meeting with his White House staff, as it were, his cabinet. And his conclusion was that there must be a traitor on staff. And he asked the question, which one of you are on Israel's side? I'm still in the passage. Uh, the cabinet meetings were designed to be private, yes, and confidential. What, what happens in cabinet stays in cabinet. It's like your board meeting. Uh, but he says there must be a traitor among us for Israel to know 
every move that he made. Subsequently, one of his servants stood up and said, there is no traitor among us, but there is a prophet in Israel who knows what you are saying even in your bedroom. And, and, and he is sharing your secrets to the king of Israel so that they maneuver away from your attempts to attack. And can I just remind Maranatha and friends tonight that God wants you to know that he, God, cannot be locked out of even your enemy's meetings. Amen, someone? Your enemy may think that they are plotting against God's people, but they can't have a meeting that your God does not know about. And so my family and my friends tonight who are watching from all over, even when your enemy does not invite God, God is still present. And so I just want to remind the church tonight that we, we need to probably just stop worrying. Why? Because prayer works. God is relaying intelligence to Elisha, who is not in the chamber of the enemy, but he is at home in Israel. And Elisha then goes and he gives counsel to the Israelites. And after this, we read that the Syrian king launches a manhunt. Because it's Elisha, uh, they, they launched this manhunt, and they decided that they're going to put a hit out on Pastor Hubert Elisha Wilkie. Let, let, let's find out where the pastor is staying. Because if we can take him out, then we will conquer Maranatha. We will conquer Israel. So, so that's the story that's there, right? Let, let's look a little closer on it. My brothers and sisters, it is possible that the enemy attacks us because our gifts are exposing the enemy. And our gift is the power of prayer. Your gift that God has given to you, where divinity and humanity is able to connect, your gift is a threat to the enemy. It exposes them for who they are. So how do you handle life, can I ask, when your gift is the reason why you are being attacked? Or all you're doing is what God has called you to do, what he has anointed you to do. And your gift is attracting the attention of the enemy. And while you are serving God, your enemy is attacking you. You do not know when you decide to follow or do you know that when you decide to follow in the footsteps of Jesus all hell will rise up against you so so Elisha is under attack why because his gift gets him in trouble with the enemy pastor they launch a statewide search for him he is in Dothan Hialeah if you please not far from Miami Samaria it's nighttime and the enemy's army had surrounded the city and by the time they get in position it's between midnight and the dawn of the next day and I don't know, I don't know why, but Elisha's servant went outside and he sees that the city is surrounded by this Assyrian army. When you look at verse number 15, he sees horses and chariots and what does the servant do? He runs back inside and he tells Elisha what he has seen and he asks him, what are we going to do? That's a valid question. And Elisha recognizes that the first thing that he has to do is to release this servant of his from fear. His servant is afraid because he did not expect what he saw. And some things can scare you, especially when they're unexpected. Expected things can even cause some people to be afraid. He is afraid because their position is unprotected. He comes out of the uh, in, uh, in the night, out in the dark, he is alone, he is outnumbered, and this can scare you. And he did not have a plan. And he looks at his master and he says, what are we going to do? Verse number 16, the Bible says, all Elisha says to his servant, he says, don't be afraid. And I thought about it and I said, you know, fear can really cause paralysis. Fear is not a member of the church. Not God's church. Fear is an offshoot. And so if you have a plan and we're working together, but I am in fear mode, then both of us can fail. Would you agree with that? Internally, we are working against each other. And the problem in the church is not so much lack of resources, but we have too much fear. Ah, have you heard them say, why worry when you can pray? 
I want to charge and challenge you tonight, my beloved brothers and sisters, that really worry is an insult to God. What I'm really trying to say is that worry is the equivalent of idol worship. We, we talk ourselves out of progress with too much fear. That's why 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 7, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but he's given us the spirit of love, He's given us power and the sound mind. In other words, you, you, you can't help that you can't see if all you have is fear. So what does God do? He provides help that we cannot see. All we've got to do is pray, yes? Because fear also causes blindness. Prayer, on the other hand, opens one eyes. Fear causes blindness. Prayer opens the eyes. So fear will not let you see the options and the power that you've got with prayer. If what you see is all you see, then you're not seeing all that there is to be seen. What I am saying is that when God opens your eyes, he removes your fears. So Elisha prayed. God opens the servant's eyes. And then he looked up into the mountains and he sees now horses and chariots. But this time it is chariots of fire around the man of God. Verse 17. Now this gets interesting. Because the difference here now is that the element of fire has been added to the equation. And fire there represents the presence of the Holy Spirit. What I'm saying is that you can't put God in a box. You can't circumscribe the Almighty. These chariots of fire means that God is involved and he comes to your rescue because of your prayer. It is because of the power of prayer and the gift of the Holy Ghost, our comforter, the third person of the Godhead, who wants to be intimately involved in our every situation. If I can get some biblical help in Exodus chapter 3 and verse number 2, when you talk about the call of Moses on the backside of the desert, where the angel of the Lord appeared to Moses in a burning bush, it was the element of the Holy Spirit. In Exodus chapter 13, verse 21, the children of Israel were traveling from Egypt to Canaan, and the Lord went before them by day with a pillar of cloud, but by night by a pillar of fire, evidence of the Spirit of the living God. And yet the Bible says something that blows my mind, in Numbers chapter 14 and verse number 4, it says the people got together and they wanted to make somebody from among them a captain that will take them back to Egypt. Can you imagine that after all that God did, did, did for them? He provided a heavenly escort for them, their security detail. Who was going to do that if they were going back to Egypt? In 1 Kings chapter 18, Elijah is a referee in a contest between Baal and Jehovah on Mount Carmel. And whoever answers by fire... Oh man, that's the God that we will serve. In verse 38 of the same chapter, 1 Kings chapter 18, it says the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering and the wood and the stones and the dust and he licked up the water and then the people fell on their faces and said, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God is God. By the time you get the second Kings chapter 7 and verse number 11, it says God sent a chariot. He sent a Uber, a fire to pick up Elijah and take him home to heaven. Holy Ghost. On, in Acts chapter 2 and verse number 3 on the day of Pentecost, the church was in the upper room having service and because they were on one accord, tongues of fire fell on each of them. Jeremiah 20, I end with that and says, he says in verse number 9, it says, I've got like fire shut up in my bones and I gotta tell somebody that the Lord is good, that the Lord answers prayers and all you've got to do is call on on Jesus. So beloved, when your soul is on fire, may I tell you that you should not let any watered down, lukewarm person try to put out your fire because it's the prayer power that keeps the fire intake. In other words, don't you take advice from an unemployed angel. I'm talking about the enemy. I'm talking about Satan. I'm talking about that dragon. So when the horses and chariots of fire showed up, it was still dark. It was distinct. 
when you are in your darkest hour, your distinct help will show up and in answer to your prayer. We sing a song, oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. When you look at verse number 17, the, the, the Elijah says, Elisha says, Lord, open the eyes of the young man. Help him to see your help from above. And when he saw, he saw horses and chariots of fire, and they were from above. My help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Can I get a witness from somebody? And by the time you get to verse number 18, he prayed another time. Make the enemy blind now. And God did so. So when the text started, hello, when the text started, the enemy could see and the servants were blind. But by the time God showed up, it was the enemy who was blind and the servant who could see. You know something? God knows how to reverse the order and turn it around for your good. All you need to do is pray, get past your fear, and then watch God. Because God is a turnaround God. The enemy is close to you, but they can't get to you. And because the Lord will not let them see you, God covers you. And under his wings, you are safely abiding. God takes care of your enemies, doesn't he? David says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes came upon me, eat up my flesh. Yes, they wanted to, but they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing. Oh, hallelujah. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell, that I may dwell, not be a sweetheart, not just an in and out, not just a passing fancy, but that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire into his temple. For in the time of trouble... He shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of the tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies wrong about. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. What strikes me here is that, that just a few years ago we had what we called Hurricane Dorian. It was a time of trouble for us. We lost so many people. We lost members. One of our churches we were building called the Salem Church in Abaco. The church wall fell down, fell over, fell down, and, and five persons lost their lives in this conference. It happened. It was a time of trouble. Oh, man, I tell you about Eric. Eric was holding on to his little boy in his right hand, and he was holding on to his mother in his left hand. And all of a sudden, in the midst of that water, the rains and everything else, something cut Eric's hand off. And he, to this day, doesn't know what cut his hand off. And when he looked, he saw his mother going out in the water with his hand still clinging on to his hand. Daisy, Daisy came on the Friday and the waters began on the Saturday evening. And Daisy came because the next Monday morning would be her grandchildren's first day in school. Daisy died on that Sabbath evening because they were holding on to a coconut tree uh, above the roof of their house. And we recognized her three weeks later when we found her because of the shirt that she was wearing. It was a time of trouble. But by the time the family members were able to read passage and pray and recognize the power of God and know that God is able to bring good out of every bad situation. Psalm 23 and verse 6 says, Goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life and you will dwell in the house of the Lord. So I just want to thank God that it doesn't matter. Dorian is limited. Cancer is limited. It can't cripple love. It can't shatter hope. It can't corrode faith. 
faith. It can't destroy peace. It cannot kill friendship. It cannot suppress memories. It cannot do any of that. It can't take away your courage. It can't invade your soul. It can't steal eternal life. And it certainly can't quench the spirit of the God of the Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we pray and we can pray without ceasing. So we say, whom shall I fear? Hey, the Bible says, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. He shall strengthen thy heart. Wait and pray and pray and wait and wait and pray and God will come through for you. Thank you, Pastor Wilkie. God comes through for us in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I've been watching the chat and I see some hallelujahs and powerful and amen. What a powerful message. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And I haven't looked at YouTube, but I know a lot is being said there too. Thank you so much, Pastor Clark. Thank you. And I think you have some stories to tell us about Pastor Wilkie. So I will get in touch with you at a later date. Right now, I'm going to ask Sister Wilkie to lead us in prayer. Oh, let the power fall from on high. Didn't our hearts burn within us as the Lord used Pastor Clark to bless our hearts. Oh Lord, we thank you that you're a God who sits high and you look low. You're at a vantage point, Heavenly Father. You see all things and your eyes walk through the earth to and fro watching your children. And we come tonight, Heavenly Father, recognizing that you have called us to be friends of yours we're not called servants lord and so tonight you have revealed your business to us the business of prayer prayer that restores and revives prayer that gives us the reset every morning in our lives and we bless your name forgive me O oh god for the times that i have failed you and as I stand to represent your people, I ask that you will wash me and make me clean. O oh, good shepherd, we have heard your voice tonight. We know your voice and may we follow where you lead. We pray, O oh God, that as the fire falls from on high upon your people, you will find us in a position like the disciples in the upper room where we will bear our hearts one to another in our small groups with our prayer partners and we will come to a place like on the day of Pentecost where your fire fell. They were united in one place in one accord. That is my prayer for us tonight. Open our eyes, Lord, that we may see the chariots of fire like the servant of Elisha did, knowing that those who are with us are more than those who are against us. We go from this place in the middle of the week. We have come tired, weary, and worn, but we press on, giving thanks, giving you all the honor, the glory, and the praise. And we live to fight another day in this battle until you come, Lord Jesus, keep us faithful. We cast all our cares upon you because you care for us. You promise you'll never leave us nor forsake us. And we just want to bless your name. We worship you and we give you thanks. Unite our hearts, O God. Let brotherly love continue. And when you come, Lord, for all the messages that you have given, May you find a prepared people ready to live and reign with you eternally. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Wilkie. I just want to say thank you 
Thank you to everyone. Thank you to the media team. Thank you, Brother Balfour Johnson. Thank you, Brother and Sister Josiah Ruff, Sister Vaughn, Sister Philip Scarborough, Sister Collymore, Sister Barbara Campbell, Elder Otmar Wilson, Brother Hines, Sister Wilkie, and of course, Pastor Clark. I just can say, we can just always run to Jesus. So as we listen to the closing song and Pastor will give the closing remarks, I just want to thank you again and pray that God will bless you for the remainder of the week.
Amen. What a powerful, powerful session we had tonight. Amen. I am sure you would agree. My soul has been tremendously blessed. Um, this is as good as it gets. God has been good to us. I want to say thanks to all of you who have joined tonight. And I pray that God will continue to bless us. I hope you have been having a spirit-filled time in our 40-day journey. Um, this is intended to, for the purpose of a personal revival in each of us. Transformation, restoration, revival is what we are hoping to experience, each of us. And you will get out of it exactly what you put in. Um, this is a personal time with the Lord. Um, just one uh, thing that we'd like to share with you. One um, improvement I think we have made uh, by popular demand. We have been asked to upload the videos earlier. And we will be doing that as of this week. Videos should be up at least by Friday. By Friday, so you can view on Friday evening for Vesper service if you want. Uh, you can view later Friday night, you can view Sabbath morning, and all the way through. So that by the time we get to 6 o'clock on Sabbath afternoon, group leaders, please um, uh, talk with your members. By the time we get to 6 o'clock on Sabbath afternoon, we will just go straight to our groups, be it on the phone line or on the Zoom platform. We'll just go straight into our groups for group discussion. So what we're going to ask you to do is to watch the video in your own quiet time, uh, along with your uh, study guide. Fill in the, the, the blank spaces as you follow along and um, have your own time of reflection on the message. Then once we get to the group sessions at six o'clock, then we can share our thoughts uh, based on what we have uh, listened to and what we have thought about. So once again, the, the videos are going to be up early this week from Friday. Next week, hopefully from about Thursday, uh, we'll be uploading it on our YouTube channel. The link will be sent. You have the link. It's the same one as um, the Sabbath morning worship service. But if not, we'll be sending it to you. And you can share the link with your friends. Share the link with your friends and those people that you're praying for. Share the link with them. Um, for those of you who still do not have uh, study guides, we're getting a few more. We did tell you to come early. We're out of them, but we're getting a few more. So you can uh, stop by on Sabbath. And we should have some more for you. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. We look forward to seeing you on Sabbath. Uh, once again, thank you so much, Pastor Clark. We were tremendously, tremendously blessed tonight by the word that you brought. Amen. God bless you. Look forward to seeing you sometime soon. And we will talk again. God bless you. See everyone on Sabbath. God bless you.